round of applause, and I encourage you to give yourself one now. We have a pretty decent crowd here today, on fairly short notice. I'm impressed with that. There's two more of these events that are coming up. One of them's on the 8th of February. That's a Friday and it's at 10 o'clock. And that's gonna be a little harder for all of us to get here if we're working people. And I suspect that most of us are. But there's also one that's being put on by the Second Amendment March, Skip Coriel. Some of you were here for the Second Amendment. To let them see what we stand for. To let them see that it's important. To let them see that we're serious and we mean business. <clears throat> Obviously, because you're here today, it shows that you care. Obviously, you see that the anti-liberty folks, and I don't call them anti-gun, they're really anti-liberty, aren't they? Right on! Yeah! The people who belong to the progressive rejection of our founding movement. Marxist. They, they are at it once again. They're using any crime spree that happens to come along to ratchet up their efforts to infringe upon our right to keep and bear arms. And to take away a variety of other rights as well. A little piece at a time. As much as they think we'll tolerate. I think we need to stop tolerating it. <laughs> Obviously you care enough to do something. You did something today and you came here. I bet just like me, you encouraged friends to come. I filled my car. I wish I could have filled my 12 passenger van. And hopefully by the time the Second Amendment March happens in the spring, I will fill that van, and I bet you'll have a car load or more yourself. And that's what we need to see. We need to see, come then, this crowd three or four or five times bigger than this. When the Second Amendment march happens in the spring, it's going to happen when the legislature is open. And you will be able to go in and talk to your legislatures that day. They'll be here. Today, they aren't here. Then they will be. They're watching. I'm sure they are. One of the guys up here said they're watching, and I'm sure they are. <laughs> They'll see it. All right. We're watching. I personally have been involved mostly behind the scenes in this battle for our natural right to keep and bear arms for more than three decades. Yes, since I was a young teenager. Yes, longer than some of you have been alive. Those of you who are young enough to be my son or daughter. I can remember things you have never seen. So let me paint the picture of creeping tyranny for you with regards to our natural right to keep and bear arms, both from my own memory and from the memories of others who have gone before us. Let us remember together. During our founding era, the mid to late 1700s and before, it was considered a duty for all those capable of bearing arms to provide themselves with a rifle or musket and one day's battle pack of powder and ball. They were to keep their powder dry and be ready at a moment's notice to take up arms to defend their homes, their communities, and their states against attack. Those with religious scruples were exempted on condition they provide or pay for someone else to serve in their stead. One state now, Vermont, is proposing to put a $500 a year fine on non-gun owners. Yeah. <laughs> stand up to defend your country, you're supposed to be paying for somebody else to do it in your state.
understood. And they're ready or trying to work through their uh, legislature to enact that so that you'll have to pay a $500 fine if you won't be a gun opener and stand up to defend the state of Vermont. <laughs> Initially, their main fears of attack were from Native Americans. Yeah. Then it was the French. And eventually, their fears of attack turned to their own government. Yeah. Turning against the people whose rights they were actually duty-bound to protect. In that day, I certainly can't imagine my relatively unknown ancestors who lived here and fought the Revolutionary War on the Patriot side. Nor can I imagine any of our well-known founding fathers asking for fundamental permission like the CPL to tuck a brace of pistols beneath their cloaks before heading out. No, they knew it was their duty. Yeah. yeah! 